Hey there, how are you this week? Um, I am late getting this out this week. I apologize for that. Uh, my week got away from me. But the first few weeks, um, I talked about some heavy stuff. And I wanted to talk about that stuff because it was kind of the purpose of the podcast, which it still is. But... I decided this week, maybe we could talk about something lighter. We're hoping for some fall weather. We're getting into kind of the holiday season with Halloween not too far away. And so I want to talk about some things in my life um, that are a little more upbeat and different. Kind of share my life with you and hopes that eventually you guys will be able to share your life with me. So here we go. Let's get into this week's podcast. It's fall wedding season. The leaves will start to change, hopefully here in Texas too. And there will be a crisp in the air. Also, hopefully in Texas too. It is still stupid hot here. But, but you will be planning the most amazing wedding at a fantastic time of year. I love fall and autumn time of year. So now you need decorating items and we have the place for you. Party Dreams Granberry allows those with any type of budget to make the wedding day spectacular. The process is simple, affordable, and memorable. Simply go to granberrytxpartydreams.square.site and check out their collection that fit your individual style and taste. Or call 817-242-6229 and ask for my friend Charity. She can guide you through the process, help you decide what you need, and help you pick everything within your budget. Party Dreams, redefining the rental industry. Active duty and military discounts are available. So welcome back. Um, I feel so incredibly blessed that you guys are here. Um, And the ones that are sticking with me and the new ones that are coming along. So I want to tell you about myself a little bit and why... Why I'm doing this, um, not why I'm doing this, but kind of so you get to know me more as like a person, um, as opposed to someone behind a podcast. I believe in sharing life with people, and I'm excited to be sharing life with you so we can help each other. Um, and like I said before, um, I shared a lot of my less happy stories and how I was able to move forward from those stories. And I will continue to talk about those things in my life. But today I wanted to start off a little bit different and share some funny, unusual things about me and my life and how it is. So I was born um, in Louisiana on an Air Force base. Uh, My dad was in the Air Force. My mom was a nurse. My parents separated when I was around two years old, and my mom moved to Oklahoma where... She was originally from. Um, I We didn't actually move to Oklahoma until I was more like five or six years old. And my grandmother and my great-grandmother still lived there. So I think I've mentioned before, they came from a very ma- matriarchal family. Um, and so she went home, basically, to help so they could help raise me. My mom worked a lot. If she wasn't working, we were doing a lot of church things. And... Um, I was very, very, very shy and introverted because of the um, abuse I had suffered as a child. Um, So I was always kind of told what I should and shouldn't like by my very matriarchal grandparents and a cult that I grew in. And I never, ever wanted to upset anyone. I never wanted to make anyone mad. So I've always had this love for music, though. I I remember being so proud one time that I knew every song on the radio when I was super little. And I've listened to music for a long time, as long as I can remember. I played the piano, and I danced for a while. And I also said, like I said in the last episode, I wanted to play the drum. So music's always been kind of a forefront for me, but nothing's something I ever pursued. 
but I think music is something that really can connect with people. Like, it makes you feel differently. It doesn't matter what kind of music you listen to, but music is is something, you know, they talk about how music heals the soul and, and stuff, and I mean, I don't know all about all that, but I do believe that people connect with music, and it affects them in different ways. There's so many different types of music, and everyone connects with a different type of music, but my mom was into big ma- band music, marching band music she loved marching band country music and 50s music i connected with her via 50s music i loved the 1950s music i thought it was fun and spontaneous and just kind of like just like happy music it was at least that's what she listened to and she loved to dance so i would she would try to teach me the 1950s dances and i would make up my own dances these songs and When I was about five years old, my mom took me to my very first concert, and I got to see the king. I got to see Elvis, which is crazy to me to say that I've actually seen Elvis, but I don't remember a whole lot about Elvis, other than the fact that he completely grossed me out by wiping sweat onto a scarf and giving it to the screaming ladies in the front row, and I thought that was crazy. But the fun and the 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 energy that was emulated at that concert like stuck with me. Like I wanted to go to more concerts, um, and so I started something that day that really hasn't ended for me. Concerts were a place where I felt comfortable. I felt like I could be myself. I didn't feel introverted. I felt like I could be a fun person. I thought concerts were spectacular and they did absolutely touch my soul. Why wouldn't you want to be in a crowd of like people who all feel the same energy you do seeing your favorite band and watching them give that energy back to you? It's like so like, ah, it is like so cool. I love concerts. I started off at a kind of a pop level with when it came to concerts. I, I saw Hall and Oates like many times. I saw Rick Springfield many times and I actually just recently saw, saw Rick Springfield, and he's still super energetic and really fun to see in concert. I saw Hall and Oates a few years ago, and they kind of jazzed up their stuff and slowed it down so they didn't emulate the same energy that I remember having when I was a kid. So it wasn't quite the experience I wanted it to be. But I tell you, if you get a chance and you like Rick Springfield, head out there and see him because he's, he's still got it. Um, growing up in a cult, I was told... Um, I was limited on what music I was allowed to like. I remember, and a side note, in six when I was about six years old, they made me burn my Grease record, and I lived and breathed Grease when I was six years old, and um, I was very sad to have to burn that. Um, so I really, you know, I was really told what I could and couldn't listen to and to stay away from certain types of music um then one day i was i was at a friend's house and this certain type of music was on mtv uh we're just being you know like this is awesome music like what's wrong with this music i don't understand what's wrong with this music But I know I'm not supposed to listen to it. And um, it was actually (laughs) Shot in the Dark by Ozzy Osbourne. So I know some of you are like, oh my God, you listen to Ozzy Osbourne. Yes, I'm a big fan of Ozzy Osbourne. He, his music was great. I've seen him in concert a gazillion times. And I, I I was at a point when I was in California, I was seeing Ozzy every six months. Um, so what you had to, what, what I was going through at this time when I first saw Ozzy on TV, I was watching him and thinking it was like a concert footage. It wasn't like a scary, he wasn't scary. Like everyone made him out to be so scary. And there was a lot in the media at that time about what Ozzy was doing with his life and how he behaved. And 98% of that was all turned out to be lies and false. Like people, a lot of churches and a lot of people who were against Ozzy set made up a lot of this stuff. Now, 
he did do some of the things, but they are explained by, unfortunately, you know, alcohol use and drug use, which isn't, you know, his finest hour. Um, but he he was not like a Satan worshiper or anything like that. So um, I remember when I first saw Ozzy that I felt super guilty that I liked a song. And I specifically, you know, don't didn't know what to say I didn't know what to believe I didn't know how my mom was gonna act I didn't know how my church was gonna act but for me that one experience with that song led me down my hard rock and heavy metal journey that I'm still on today um and I documented that journey by going to concert after concert after concert that I could go to I just I, I just discovered that it was it was fabulous. My, you know, my mom, this is the one area where my mom was super fantastic because when I realized that I was into this kind of music and I was so scared that I was going to be judged, she was super open and super great and very supportive and would listen to it with me. So she could, I'm, I'm sure, so she could see what I was listening to and if I was going to, at the time, they were saying kids were going to kill people who listened to these this kind of music. So I'm sure, she, you know, in some way, she was trying to see if that was going to happen. But it didn't. She It didn't come across that way to me. To me, it came across, hey, you know, let's listen to your songs and see what, see what you like about them and stuff. And she would go, oh, this has a good beat to it. Or this has, you know, it was a very fond memory with my mom because everyone else around us was very judgy about what I was listening to. Um, and so I have to give my mom props to that. And I, to this day, try to emulate that with my own kids because my own kids, well, my oldest listens to almost exactly the same music I listen to. But my youngest, he has always had his own brain when it's come to anything. Um, and he likes different types of music than I do. So I, I, I make sure we listen to it and we talk about it and, and, you know, I pick out things I like about it instead of complaining about a type of music that I may not like. Um, so music became sort of an outlet for me. Um, I could hear, like, the drums and the bass individually in a lot of songs. And I thought that, and that were the instruments that I actually liked best. And so in, in, a, in, a, in a genre where guitar was really dominated the songs uh, let alone by the singers I could still hear the individual um instruments and what they do like there's nothing better than hearing that d double bass pound in a song or or the the rhythmic of a, a, a bass guitar that's going along with a, a with an actual guitar I, I think that is amazing how that's all linked together and creates a sound that people love and and connect to um there were so many amazing guitars in this genre but without the sound of the bass and the beat of the drums the guitar would not be what it is today so van halen is my greatest example of this because if you were a van halen fan you all automatically think of you know eddie van halen who was an amazing guitar player right fantastic but if he didn't have his brother Alex Van Halen behind him playing the amazing drums that he can play and you didn't have Michael Anthony the bassist at the time and um and when they were all together still he was an amazing bassist like you know we're not talking kiss bass you know kiss you know they don't have the greatest bass solo but Michael Anthony Jason Newstead of Metallica, those guys had some amazing bass solos where they actually played their bass like guitars. It was so amazing. Um, so anyway, <laughs> um, I entered the concert life and lived music when I was in college. I moved to California in the early 90s to go to college. And instead of doing the college life and doing things on campus I spent most of my time on Sunset Strip going to the Roxy the Whiskey and Go-Go the Troubadour 
Um, I even got to see Gazaris. If anyone is familiar with Gazaris, I got to see Gazaris before they tore it down. Um, so, Coco. So, um, the Sunset Strip was coming off the 80s scene by the time I got there. So, I wasn't there in the height of the 80s movement. But we were, we were coming towards the end. And there were still, like, a plethora of bands that would stand on the street and pass out flyers. And girls dressed the part and guys were still wearing leather jackets and some of them even still wearing leather pants i saw slash walking down sunset strip well he was being held up he was really drunk but i saw slash um walking down sunset strip and i got to see the guys from warrant at the whiskey a go-go they were hanging out they were not playing but we ended up finding a couple of bands that we like followed and became friends with and one of them had twin lead singers. I remember walking out of the Roxy one time, and one guy handed me a flyer, and I looked at him, and I turned and looked, and uh, they were—another <laughs> guy was um, standing next to me. I apologize. My dogs are fighting in the back. Um and uh, they were twins. And so we became friends with them. They even wrote a song for us. Um, and it was super special for us. They were very supportive during some tragic times of our lives in California. And um, they they were good guys. They were nice guys. And, and that was sort of, for me, I had a really hard time connecting with people in California because they were different. And I was incredibly naive coming out of Oklahoma my whole life but we had made friends with another band and the, gu- the the guitarist for that band was very protective of us while we were in California and he uh um he would work watch out for us and take care of us and do the things that um he you know, made sure we were always safe. I guess what I'm trying to say is he always made sure we were safe. And so it was fun to meet those guys and be friends with them. But the actual, like, lifestyle of a band that where they all lived together and they were all kind of gross and their hygiene was sort of, you know, on the edge and they looked for women to take care of them, that part of that scene I was never a part of. You know, we were, you know, coming from the valley, coming into or coming from Huntington Beach, coming into sunset to watch the bands and then we would leave um but as a as a true introvert going to the roxy and the whiskey and the troubadour or any concerts that i liked was basically a great way to celebrate the music and the people around me that felt the same way. So it was a way to meet people who had similar interests for me, especially in California, where it's kind of hard to meet people. Um, I did get, I did fall and get a um, a leather jacket that had the um, tribute of Ozzy Osbourne and Randy Rhodes on the back of it. I still have it to this day, and my friend makes fun of me for it, and she gives me a hard time that she still can't believe that I like that kind of music so highly (laughs) um so as I continue to be in love with all sorts of hard rock and heavy metal music um I still to this day love the genre of the music I love concerts um and I love current music so I got super into shinedown um Shinedown is one of the greatest bands I've ever, ever listened to. I truly love them. They, I've seen them almost every time they come into town. And then there's Upper and Coming, new band that's getting some traction called Dirty Honey, which is like a very bluesy type band, which is another kind of, like, that's the music kind of I like, especially now, the, the Rival Sons and Dirty Honey and Blackstone Cherry that sound to me is amazing and fun, fun, fun to listen to. So if you like kind of bluesy southern rock music, that music is coming back around with these some of these bands, and they're fantastic. Um, but again, this was an outlet for me. New, it 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 makes it 
it doesn't make me feel angry. It doesn't make me feel upset. It makes me feel happy. It makes me feel motivated. You know, it's my workout music. It's it's my motivation music. You know, you notice on the the intro and outros to the podcast, I found the like heaviest song I can find on my platform that I could play with, you know, that was still royalty free music. Um, as I've gotten o- older, though, I've also discovered that there is a therapeutic, that music is therapeutic for both the audience and the performers. I, you know, talked about Shine Down, and they really set the stage for this kind of thing. I, I've liked Shine Down for so long, I've watched the transformation of the band, and how he the lead singer especially went through some addiction issues very early on and he i've seen him when he was not at his best and i've seen him now when he's at his best but they do so much and talk about so much in their songs about getting better and feeling better and they put it all out there for you so you know that you're not alone and when you're going through your own stuff. And, and I think people really connect with that. They had a song that came out the day my mom died uh, called Daylight. And it couldn't have been a more perfect song for the situation I was going through. And as I looked on social media and stuff, so many other people were going through similar situations. And it reminded them of their loved ones. And um, it was amazing for me to, one, know that you're not alone when you're going through all this mess and two that you could find a song that said exactly what you're feeling at that time also uh recently i was watching a documentary on some of the 80s kind of hard rock groups and the a band called skid row he's the same way he sort of shared um the guitarist for skid row shared that he had been through a lot as a kid and used his music as an outlet, well, first of all, to get the anger out that he was feeling regarding the abuse. And next, he is now helping other people who have issues and want to get through that. And he's really helping others to, via his music that way, too. Um, so I think I think that that is really amazing and I'm not saying every band out there has that connection I'm saying that I realized that some of the bands that I were actually very drawn to had a positive message behind the music when I got divorced um from my first husband I gave up my rock music because at that time it was resonating with me so much but it was the anger side of me and I was I was very angry and I was very sad and I was very depressed. And that's the kind of music that I was being drawn to. And it wasn't healthy for me. It wasn't a healthy outlet for me at that time. So I gave up my music. And at the time, we had a Christian rock station in Dallas, um, which I miss very much. And all I did was listen to this station. And I was so thankful that that was there i didn't have to listen to the other christian music that i don't connect with i don't connect with normal christian music so i found bands like disciple and decipher down and red and skillet and you know uh thousand foot crutch at that time that were they had amazing rock music it was fantastic i still oh man i would go see disciple anytime they come to town i love them and they had fun music and it was all positive and it was based on scripture and at the time when i gave up my music for lent and listened to only christian rock music it it helped me and it reconnected my soul to what music is supposed to do for people and it's supposed to heal and it's supposed to make them feel better so I think that was an interesting thing for me that I did, and I I believe that. But even bands like Five Finger Death Punch, which I'm not a fan of, um, supports people with mental health issues, supports young listeners. He pulled, I saw them recently, and they pulled a nine-year-old on the stage and was very gentle and kind and made it a fun experience for him, you know. So, yes, I love hard rock and heavy metal music. I like across the board that. I still like my pop 80s, and I still like my hair bands and my Christian rock, and I listen to it all. But I've also found some current music that I really, really, really enjoy as well. 
and it 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 does do good things for people and and so if you've got someone out there that's listening to music find 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 something positive about the music they're listening to because there is a chance that it is connecting with them in some way and they are trying and it and it it's a way of talking to you and tell you what they're feeling so um so let me know what kind of music can you connect with you know let me know via instagram facebook or email or some of your what your some of your ah some of your favorite bands are and uh email me at making adjustment at gmail dot com and we'll be right back with some more So speaking of bands that support, I mean, I was talking about bands that support their community and other people. I would like to talk about Backbone Swag. The uh, head guy of that was celebrating four years of sobriety, so congratulations to you. But he celebrated this by donating $8,000 to the Pro- Project Hope and Saving Grace. And they help people who have had addiction problems and stuff. And so they were able to take money that they put aside based on purchases that were made. It was not extra purchases. It was not an increase in anything. He didn't have to do anything but buy a shirt or buy merchandise from them. And they made this $8,000 donation to help other people. So go and buy, check out what they've got. Buy a shirt. I love their shirt. I didn't get the shirt picture up of my son and his but I do have it and I will be posting it this week and they make donations based on everything that they have uh, that we purchase so check out backboneswag.com and help them make future donations to help others Okay, so we talked about my music taste. What else we got? I very much love the holidays. So I'm super excited. I get to decorate my house for Halloween this weekend and with my boys. My oldest son and I are crazy Griswold people when it comes to holidays, especially Christmas. Christmas, we very much go all out. So we're gearing up for decorating for Halloween this weekend. Um, the kids in our neighborhood really like the decorations um, and stuff because we live kind of in an older neighborhood so not everyone decorates for Halloween but we do get a lot of trick-or-treaters and everyone likes to come by the house and see what we've done. Um, I do go out for fall too. Fall like I said earlier is my favorite and then of course Christmas. Um, It's so fun and it's just a great family time. Um, my My younger son is starting to get into it now. He's way better than he used to be, but it was a lot of work for him when he was little, and he didn't really like that. Um, I love horror movies. I love Christmas movies. And when I was in college, I was a big Disney fan. Um, and I had all my Disney movies and then all my Stephen King books all on one bookshelf, and I repeatedly got made fun of for that. It was such an opposite spectrum of things. So, you know. Um, I will definitely post pictures of our Halloween decorations once we're done. And I do love scary movies, but I don't do haunted houses. I do not like to be touched, chased, whatever they do in haunted houses. That's not my thing. So, but I like to do, like, movie-thons. And I even like to watch, like, Halloween Town still and Casper like the kid movies or the really old like the ghost of Mr. Chicken and um the old classics like Clue and all those I love those too uh I watch those every year I have like a whole day of where I have old movie day for Halloween um and then of course I watch Christmas movies and listen to Christmas music all year long I'm one of those crazy people that I, that tries not to start on November 1st for the Christmas music but I don't think I succeeded that last year. I'm pretty sure that I started November 1st. So, um, I grew up in Oklahoma. I moved to California. And I went to my first baseball field when I was a kid in New York. I got to see the Yankees. And at that time, 
time, I didn't really have the appreciation for the sport or the fact that I was at Yankee Stadium. And I had no clue that baseball would become my life. I used to go to the 89er games, which are now the, I think they're the Dodgers, Oklahoma City Dodger games um, when I was a kid. So we did go to baseball games, but I didn't have a true appreciation of the game yet. But when I moved to California, I was taught how to keep score at Dodger games so I could follow the game. And, and that really helped me pick up on what they do and 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 how the game flows there's so much that goes on in a game of baseball that if you don't understand it it could come across as slow and boring but the game of baseball is intricate and detailed and precise it is a beautiful sport and i have so enjoyed getting to know the game and and the the thoughts process that goes behind each move that people make it's almost like chess um i remember going to the original rangers stadium um, even though I had strep throat, I was super sick that I was there at the original Ranger Stadium, which I'm proud to say that I was actually there. Um, I remember going to see the Dodger game and the breathtaking views on a very clear day in LA. The view was spectacular from a Dodger game. I have not been to the, like when they've cleaned it up, I'm sure it looks very different than when I was there. Um, I've been right behind the home plate at Anaheim Stadium to see the Angels, and I remember the first time I came back, well, I was coming, I was moving back from California to Texas, and they had opened the new, what the, what was then the ballpark in Arlington, the quote-unquote new stadium, and I was in a hotel, and we rode up a glass elevator, and you could just see the the most beautiful ball field ever. I mean, I know I haven't been to them all, but the ball, the old ballpark in Arlington is still standing and still one of the most spectacular stadiums ever built. It is, it is the beautiful red built brick that it is, the detailed sculpting, the, the, little bitty details of baseballs everywhere and the way it was built it was just it was just it's just a breathtaking place i i truly loved it um we had tickets to the first ever event at the new stadium that when they built a new stadium across the street from the second stadium and closed it in because it got so hot here which we're very thankful for now because it was super hot this summer um, but we had tickets to the very first event at the new stadium in Arlington and the pandemic hit the week before and shut everything down. But when we finally got to step inside the new stadium for the first time, it was, it was so worth the wait. We have supported the Rangers through thick and thin, so we are not your fair weather Ranger fans and the support and the love that they're getting this year has been so fun. They they are really doing well. And we're going to talk about that, I think, a little bit more next week. Um, I got to see St. Louis Stadium as well. We went to, took my son there for his 18th birthday. And that was fun because everything, like, super close. They have, like, a Texas Live. Texas Live here has restaurants and bars and stuff around it. But it's based on St. Louis's. And it's it's so close-knit. close, close knit. And then you can see, like, all of downtown St. Louis. It's so beautiful. Um, we also took a tour of the Rockies Stadium in August of last year. But we didn't. We weren't there at the same time as a game. So I look forward to being able to go back and see a game there. Because it was super amazing as well. We were supposed to go to the Marlin Stadium because that was my youngest son's favorite team. And July 2020, but again, due to the pandemic, we had to cancel those plans. So we're still looking to go to Miami to see the Marlins Stadium. Uh, my kids have been playing baseball since they were three years old. I have been their scorekeeper for the majority of that time, and I've gradu graduated to Game Changer. And if anybody knows or remembers when Game Changer first came out, I admit that that was super intimidating it's like on your phone and you have to do all these things and it's more than just you know 
coloring in things and keeping track of balls and strikes. It's, it's way more, but I have grown to do it. I do it for my son's high school game team now, and it's it's fun. It's a fun experience. It's fun watching them do what they love. My, my older son steps on the mound, and he is someone that I don't know. He is so confident and bold, and nothing phases him. My oldest son, same way. He gets in that shortstop's position, and he commands the field. He knows what he's doing, and it's 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 amazing to watch, and it's fun to watch as a mom because you're like, who are these kids, and where did all this confidence come from? Because it's not for me. Um, so baseball has always been like sort of a family event for us, and even as I'm remarried and my ex-husband is remarried, we all went to St. Louis together to celebrate my son's 18th birthday. We do things we all went to uh, Frisco uh, Rough Riders, which is the um, uh, Rangers, I think it's double A team uh, or senior A team here in, in uh, Frisco. And we all went to that for my son's birthday as well. We, you know, it's just, it is truly a family event when we do it all together. And I'm super blessed that I decided to pay attention and know the game. So I can talk to my kids about it because that's all they talk about. And I know what they're doing when I when they're out there. And I, I can, you know, say, hey, you know, they're going to steal here or they're not going to steal here. I'm still learning pitches. I cannot see the different pitches when they throw them like other people around me can. So I'm still learning that. But I, I find it super fun and amazing to have this experience and this life because I love it. I absolutely love it. I do have some credentials behind my name. I am a social worker. I have my, I got my master's degree in social work. I've been at my current job for 25 years. And I recently started doing therapy again. Um, and so I'm also working to get my uh, clinical license. So I am an LCSW. So not all of my babbling on about life and things is not does not go uncredentialed um i will be doing therapy independently if i choose to do so once i get my lcsw i have two amazing boys a loving and supportive husband and i have four dogs i love dogs dogs are the best dogs love you no matter what and they're always happy to see you so i am introverted shy in crowds but I have some amazing friends I can't do without and I truly have been blessed in life with some fantastic friends that have become my family because I do not have a big family I have basically almost no family left I have a brother who's awesome but he lived far away from me God has blessed me with so many things so when you hear me talk about my past and all I have experienced, please know that God may have not got me out of these situations, but he absolutely brought me through them because I could be a totally different person if I didn't have God in my life. These, these situations made me strong enough to share with you, so hopefully you know you're not alone. Alone. <laughs> So join me next week as we talk about baseball next week. So those of you that are baseball fans, come listen because we're going to have some guests and some fun experiences next week. And then the following week, I'm going to start my journey about talking about being a caregiver um, and my mom's experience and all of that and kind of get into a little more detail with that. Um, and like I said, we have a couple of other fun uh, guests coming up on this podcast so i look forward to keep keeping it going with you guys so you guys have a great week and i will see you next time